Okay, let's get rolling here this evening, guys and gals. We're not going to make this very long. Um, I know you guys and gals have things to do on a beautiful day in Florida today. So uh, we're going to uh, we'll, we'll get things done quickly and get everybody about their way. So let's go over the new update that, uh, that we are releasing. Um, after I released the arrows, the arrows, the whole, the whole point of the arrow-based system was to take out the subjectivity on a retracement when to get long or short a market. And it has several variables that it uses. And what it does, it tries to find a sweet spot when to get long or short on any given market. And what we have in the room now, I'm going to show you what we have now currently and how this is different. I'll put them side by side. And I'll show you the difference in eliminating some of the shallow retracements in the programming. What I tried to do is I tried to eliminate any lower probability trade. In other words, I tried to eliminate a retracement that was too shallow where it could possibly go to a full retracement. So let's just get started right away. This is gold, for instance, today and yesterday on gold. And this is a five sim Renko. So I want to show you this. This is a five. This is a five sim. A five sim Renko. I got three days loaded, twenty four seven. Just like all you guys and gals. I'm gonna make sure you know the time frames I'm looking at. So that's just a five sim. And over here, I want to show you a short time frame how the system is gonna work. This is crude today and yesterday. I, well, this is like looks, looks like today. Yeah, this is today's action. This morning's action. And I'll show you what that time frame is. That's a three sim, and that's the two time frames that I have in the room right now already. I have a five and a three. What I've done though is I've added market uh, market analyzer with this also. There's two ways you can do it. Either way, when you're looking for these arrows to fire off, and there's an audible alert that you can alert yourself. It can beat. It can make five different sounds when an arrow, one of these arrows, fires off. The unique thing about these arrows, some of these arrows produce some pretty amazing runs uh, on deep retracements. As you can tell, gold just hammered it yesterday. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row that were right, eight, including that one. So with this system, there's days where this thing will just fire six, seven, eight in a row, and they work. I mean, it's, it's on these deep retracements. So, you know, it's real nice uh, how I got this program for you that we'll be getting out to you. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get this over, over to Gerald this weekend. He's going to start sending it out to all members next week. And I'll also be putting him in the room also. So um, I will be put showing uh, the signals in the room um, uh, and taking the uh, shorter-term swings out. If you lease the program, you have the shorter-term swings because they include momentum trades, like you know how to trade. You can still keep them on your system. We're not going to disable it. So, But um, this is something where... Uh, you know, going forward, this is going to eliminate a lot of the small swings that, uh, that increase your likelihood of a stop out. So what we want to do is there's two ways. You can have an audible alert when these arrows come up, or you can have what's called market analyzer. Now, market analyzer, what it is, is it's just going to be a little box. I'll show you real quick. It's just a little box like this. and what, what's going to have is you're going to have your instrument in there. So let's just say you add the NASDAQ futures. Um, what it's going to show is if I add, oops, if I just load the market analyzer in there real quick, um, oops, it's going to show you, uh, it will show you what, um, when there's an arrow long or short. Let me get this set up here. So it will show you if there is a uh, sell arrow or buy arrow, and it will turn red if it's a sell arrow, and it will say short, and it will turn green with a little box around it with the, um, with the current instrument, and it will say long, and have a big green box around it. So when these arrows fire, you can either have a, um, you can have the instrument up. Let me remove the asking price here. There we go. So here's what it'll look like. As the market's ticking, you can load as many instruments in as you want. It doesn't matter. You can load as ton, many instruments as you like to follow when these arrows fire. 
So these are just some of the markets that I like to follow. So, you know, you can, let's say you just have this bunch right here. And you can just put it on the bottom of your screen or what have you. So what's going to happen is, let's say this arrow fires red right here when this bar closes. When this bar closes, under gold, under GC to the right, under J arrows, we'll, we'll, we'll name it sim arrows. That's just my programming. I had it named this way, but it'll be a different name for you. But what it'll show is it will show a big red box that flashes and says short. And what that means is that specific chart, you can tie the market analyzer in with any specific chart. So you can have two market analyzers. You can have one over here for a 5 sim, and you can have one over here for a 3 sim if you wanted to. Or if you just want the 5 sims to fire the longer time frame, because you can see a longer time frame will not fire as many arrows, and the shorter time frame will fire more swings. But they're still both going to be deep retracements. This is a 5 sim. This is a 3 sim. You can see you have significant more amount of arrows on the 3. Still deep retracement. Still great signals. And this is more of a deeper retracement. Less signals. So you can actually have a market analyzer. What I do on my charts is I put it right um, down here to the bottom left. Some like it up in the upper left. I would not put it on the right side, though, because that's where price action is. You can put it anywhere on your chart. Upper left, upper left, or bottom left, it's up to you. Um, and then it will fire, like I said, it will fire red. If it's a red arrow, it will say short. A big red box around it will fire. And th that, that tells you that the arrow just fired off in the market. Now, what, why is that significant? Because what I'm noticing is with algorithms and program trading, what I'm finding is, is I'll find the S&P and the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ futures and the Dow minis all fire at the same exact minute or within even a couple seconds. What does that tell me? It means they're trying to mark those basket of futures up or they're trying to mark that basket of futures down. And that's very significant because the moves can be very, very fast and brisk. And um, so you can actually group, if you're doing that, you can just group the S&P, NASDAQ, you can put the Dow in there. You know, whatever you want to do, whatever you trade. And when you see a, it, it lets you know when there's possibly program selling or program buying. And there's a lot of computers that buy and sell. We all know that, you know, we are in an electronically traded market on all these markets. So it's no longer floor traders. It's actually all electronic trading. So you get a real good feel on Market Analyzer. I don't use it per se to say, hey, I like the alerts. On mine, I like to have different sound alerts for different markets. That's how I like to do it. Um, but, you know, I like to see when the mark and the market up or mark and the market down in a certain, if they're all firing within a couple, like within a minute or so of each other. It lets me be aware that they're trying to really bring the S&P up, really bring the S&P down. There's a really great correlation. If you trade the euro, what I like to do is I, if I see the euro, a long signal, I want to see that the dollar is a short signal. If I see a dollar short year long, I know they're going to uh, mark the market up because there's a relationship between the dollar and the euro. So, you know, you can, so that's the neat thing about market analyzer. But you can use it how you want to do it, but that's an extra tool we're, we're adding in for you guys and gals, okay? So that comes with the indicator. It's very simple. Uh, the indicator, once you download it, the market analyzer is already built into the indicator. So uh, you don't have to download Market uh, Analyzer all by itself. It's actually built into the indicator already. Okay? So that being said, let me show you the difference. I don't want to hold you guys too long today. Let me show you the difference in what we have now and what we have currently. So let's look at back. This is what I show in the room. These are live signals that came in the room. And here's the S&P. This is at 9.15 in the morning, 9.15 in the morning, all the way to, you know, here's 10.55, and this is what? almost 10 or 10 20 pretty much the same what did i eliminate what i wanted to eliminate is the shallow retracements that are possible stopouts so what i did if you noticed right here let's just look at this basket of at, at 10 at, at 1003 1003 look at it over here oops so the 1003 look at this basket of, of errors that fired off now let's look at the basket of errors that fired off over here Significant difference, huh? 
Real big difference. Now let's go back here. Let's look at 9.15 in the morning, 9.15 morning at this end top. Look how pretty that end top is, right? And that called it, my system called it there. But look at these arrows that did not need to fire. See these arrows? Those arrows did not need to fire because we already got an end top over here on the system. So I just eliminated on those set of uh, arrows right there, here and here, I eliminated one, two, I eliminated these, these two arrows and these three arrows. I eliminated five arrows just on that by itself. And that's very significant because you need to understand is, let's even go further. Hold on one sec. Let me make this, let's go all the way to, which, where is that? That's 14. Maybe I have that matched up right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you, you want to make a, wait, 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 wait. Hold on one sec. Let me make sure I get this matched up right here for you. Yeah, that, that's it. So there's 915. There, there they are. Okay, so there's your double top. There's your double top. And then it comes down to, you can see these arrows on the new update, call the high, where this is just firing one, two, three. This is the big, biggest significant uh, um, uh, update, though. Look at the update right here. Look how at, what was it, around 10, 1030, 10, 1030, uh, 10.05 or so. Look at all these arrows that fired. They're totally eliminated from the chart. You see how they're totally eliminated from the chart? And then the market comes down and it rebounds again up into the 1053 area. Once again, look how my chart eliminates, my new update eliminates the, um, these arrows. See how I eliminate those arrows? But it caught the significant high. Here, let me get this. There we go. Now we're talking. So you notice that if we go from all the way from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arrows that worked out, and the old program, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, you know, I eliminated almost half the arrows on because of deeper retracements. And it's very significant because is this an easier chart to trade off of on the whole trading day? We have the whole morning trading day. Is this an easier chart or is this an easier chart to trade off of, right? So we can still do it with this chart by just waiting for a deeper retracement on these arrows. But you can totally see the, the significance of the update because now I'm looking at only deep retracements. And it makes my trading a lot easier because I'm not going to fool with these arrows. These arrows won't even fire on the new update I'm putting in. Yes, it's a shallow retracement, and some of these do work out. I mean, this bunch worked out. This bunch worked out with the stop. This bunch would have been stopped out, right? This worked out, but do we need all those? No, because if you want more trades, what are you going to do? Since I'm done deeper retracements, we'll just go down to a smaller time frame. So this is a 5 sim. This is the same exact chart. See, 5 sim. It's a 5 sim Renko. 5 sim, and this is a 5 sim Renko. Same exact chart, totally different program because I'm looking for deeper retracements. Okay, so I'm eliminating a lot of the shallow retracements. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's go over to the 3 sim. Let's compare apples to apples with crude. If you notice on crude, here's what we had today. And let's look what we got here. Look how I just eliminated all these arrows that fire. Now, there are some good trades in crude, obviously. It's called the top, 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 top. And this uh, over here also called some nice short, 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 short. These all were first target trades. Look at this, though. Look how my deep retracement gave me signals to go long this morning. Check that out. Nailed it. That sucker went from 63.60, was it, all the way to 64.10. So you had a $500 trade potential just off that one where the old program did not fire because it's a deeper retracement, so it has more legs. Also, take a look at these arrows up here that fired. See these arrows that fired? 
on the older program because it's a re the marker was in a retracement. Look at that. It's eliminated, isn't it? Gave you the top, gave you the top, gave you the top, gave you the top. Now let me show you a little bit the cool thing about the new, new, new program also that you guys are going to love. Now I put this in my PDF, and I don't know if some of you guys have been doing this, but this is really significant now because it works really well. Right here, let me blow this up. Right here, we did not have negative market buildup. Now watch. I like when an arrow fires, if this arrow fires, this is an M top, if an arrow fires, I want to see a negative market buildup. When this arrow fired, I want to see a negative market buildup. I want to see a negative market buildup here too, right? Over here for these arrows, I want to see a positive market buildup. Positive market buildup after this closes, positive market buildup after this closes, positive market buildup after this closes, right? So one, two, positive here. I want to see negative market delta here. That's all you really have to do with these arrows to qualify these. They're so accurate. So what we want to do then is that here's what happened on this one. Check this out. This, these arrows did not have a negative market delta. Uh, they, they, they were positive market delta, okay? So they are positive market delta. So what we want to do is we want to do what? We don't want to take that short, right? So this wasn't even a setup. But look what it sets up. And I went over this when I first released the system. But now since it doesn't fire a lot of arrows, this thing is beautiful. No, no negative market delta got us in that trade. Okay? So we're not in it. But this tells you if you don't get a negative market delta with arrow fires and it goes above it, break, retest, and you get arrows that fire, you have now have, you have a transition to the upside. And it can be significant. I've seen these transitions go 40, 50, 60, 70, even 100 ticks sometimes. And that transition, because it had no negative market delta, it broke it, retested, and it's off to the races. So that's what's significant about the new update is that look how clean the chart is now. The chart is very, 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 very clean. Because what we're doing is, is I'm eliminating junk on shallow retracements. So if I look at, if I'm taking this long, that's a beautiful long, beautiful long. It didn't even show up on the old pro program because that was not geared to looking for deep retracements. So now it caught the deep retracement. This one on the high, I mean, just check out your trading for today, how beautiful this is. I mean, you're talking about right there, $500 potential. And right here, after the fill of 85 all the way down to 15, you're talking about $700 potential. Just on those two big swings holding runners on the potential just trading off of deep retracements. That's why I did the update. And that's why I think you guys are going to be pretty impressed with it on all these markets. So, but you can see what I'm eliminating. I'm eliminating, I'm eliminating these shallow retracements because they sometimes work and sometimes don't. That shallow retracement that's eliminated. Right? So that's going to help you out significantly on trying to catch some of these swings. Now like I said we have we have the five and the three. This is a five, this is a three. So starting next week, I'm gonna be showing these in the room. So tomorrow we'll have our same charts on that we always had up. So make sure that everybody knows that, uh, that wait for shallow retracements like, like I teach in my videos and all that stuff. And then when I'll be showing these in the room next week. Okay, these signals. And it's plug and play. You don't have to change any numbers. You don't have to fit a certain uh, market to a certain parameter. The parameters all already preset. All right, and I'm going to tell you exactly what to do with it, and we'll start training on this next week. Okay, but I'm trying to eliminate signals that are shallow, and you can see why. Just killing it. It's killing it in some of these markets. Russell 2000, the S&P, the DAX. Some of these markets, there'll be a signal, and you see a runner, and it just some of them are breathtaking because they, they, they got such a big run just after the error appears with the negative or positive market delta. And guess what? If it doesn't show positive negative market delta like this one down here, because this one worked, this one worked, this one worked, this one worked, this one, this one, this one, this one didn't qualify, this one worked. If it shows, doesn't show positive negative market delta after the error, don't take it. And if you get positive market delta and it turns negative the next, next one, guess what you do? You're, you're smarter than the average trading opponent. You take a small loss. These losses can be very, very small trading systematically with the five and three sim. 
if you let market build to guide you in and out when these errors appear because I have a trend filter built into this already. I added another trend filter. A trend filter is already built into this. It's better than the one uh, on the original program. I added another trend filter. So I have an additional trend filter built into the system. And that's going to allow us to, to, to get some of these big moves with overall the uh, you know, trend scope. And, and the one thing I like to do, if you're an S&P 500 trader, I suggest you do this. Put up the DAX beside the S&P. Even if you don't trade the DAX, because if I get DAX signals and the s and is following it, man, they, they cruise together. And it's, it's funny with Mark and Analyzer, that's another way to do it. I put the DAX and the S&P next to each other. The DAX will sometimes give you a couple minute heads up if the S&P is going to fire a big long trade. And if the DAX is working in that favor, the S&P usually follows. It's almost like a leading indicator sometimes. It doesn't lead all the time, but the DAX and the S&P, very great relationship on certain days. When they, when they line up, they almost mimic each other to a T. So the DAX will fire signals where the S&P don't. Well, the S&P, if it looks just like it, highs and lows, you know, that's a good time to even long the S&P with the DAX. So you can basket trade. I call it basket trading. I like to do uh, when you have a significant uh, move in the same signals on different markets that are very similar. I'd be interested in putting up news chart tomorrow. We could compare it to current charts. No, I don't want to put. I can't do it, Steve, because uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we're not going. We're going to keep the uh, uh, the old one up, the old one up, and then. I'll send charts out to everybody, but I'm putting up Monday. Monday's going to be the first day because I've got to scale all this stuff and make sure everything's fit to scale. And I've got to make sure I get everything over. To, I'm going to be working actually tomorrow getting everything over to Gerald. So uh, we will put it up Monday, though. Monday you will have it up. And, uh, but I'll show you the charts tomorrow in the room. I'll show you these charts tomorrow in the room to show you the, the difference when they're firing. Um, I can bring them back and forth from the computer, but I will be showing them Monday. Yeah, but yeah, I have no problem showing you tomorrow also. Not a problem, man. Any other questions? The new charts are right here. The new charts are right here. This is it, Emmanuel. These are the new charts. These are the ones with the eliminated arrows. I eliminate a lot of the arrows. These are looking for deep retracements. That's, it doesn't stay very long, Daryl doesn't stay very long so that's why I like the alert better I like the alert better we can get it to stay longer the more I play with the market analyzer um, I'm going to try to have to get it added uh, where it can stay a little bit longer than normal but it, it doesn't stay very long yeah I like when the basket goes together when they go together but the main is the alert I love the alert though you can't beat the alert I would use the alert if, if it was me but I like the market analyzer because it does analyze different markets at the same time when they do fire. When will Gerald send the new indicator? Gerald's going to be sitting out next week, Vish. They're all, all members get it next week. You got it. That's why I want to do a conference call here Thursday. He's going to work on it over the weekend. And we're going to slowly ship everything out to everybody. Um, um, he'll ship it, get everybody updated, and get out to everybody. And I will be showing it in the room also. Any other questions? Great questions. Any other questions at all? Does everybody see the difference though? Everybody see the difference? The difference is eliminating, like on this chart right here, this is the uh, Emmanuel. You see the difference? Watch. These, these got eliminated from the chart. These, were, these are eliminated from the chart. Okay. These areas are eliminated from the chart, and they won't show up. This is the this is the indicator. It's a lot smoother. It only looks for deep retracements. You see, this is the new one. This is the old one. You can see the old old one takes shallow and deep retracements. It's not also. It's not going to fire arrow when it's in transition. In other words, if I'm in between these moving averages, and I get an arrow that fires, guess what? It's not going to fire. Let me show you this real quick. Watch. You see this arrow. The fires in the middle of a transition. Oops, gosh, dang it. See that arrow fired? A lot of those are stop outs. Right there. That will not fire on the new one. You can see it didn't fire on the new on the new uh, on the new program. It did not fire right here. 
And you see how the deep retracement caught this and this one didn't? You see that? Look at this. That's where the new program fired, right at the high. You see the, how the old program, Emmanuel, right here? See how the old program fired on a shallow retracement? The new program waited right there for the deep retracement. See that? The new program fired right here on this other chart. See the difference? That's where it fired right there. That's a significant difference. It eliminates a lot of un unnecessary retracements. And in doing that, it catches larger swings, it catches way less stop outs, and then you can you can try to position yourself to let the runners run because some of these are significant. I mean, this right here in the morning at 914, that first one was 48 down to 28, right? 48 down to 28. That's a $2,000 trade right there. $2,000 trade, and you had a $130 risk per one contract. Two grand, $130 risk right there. This one right there alone, $1,400 trade potential. This one, $1,000 trade potential, $130 risk. This one, same thing, $900 trade potential. It doesn't matter which area you took. You want to, with this system, so catching deep retracements, you want to try to scale and let the runners run as much as possible. No, they're a little bit, they're a little bit different, Adam. They're a little bit different. See you, Robert. Oh, positive negative market delta. It's very simple. Yeah, let me show you. Here's what you do. It's very easy to do. Okay, let's look over some trades real quick. Let me slide this out of the way. All right, let's look at market delta right down here. Let's look at this short right here. Let's look at this short right uh, right here. Let's see. Well, let's look at the long and the short. We'll do a long and we'll do a short. So let's go look at a long. Here's the best way to do it. Where's my crosshairs? There we go. All right, let's look at uh, that happened at 937.07. So you see us down here, 93707, 93707, 937. Okay, here we go. 938. There's your retracement. Okay. You see this right here? 410, positive 410. That was your that was where you go long. See that right there? See that right there, Al? You see this long over here? That is your long side setup. Let me show you. You see this arrow at 9:37. It posted. What we'll do is we'll wait. See, see, see that's the, that's the retracement I'm getting. There's my retracement. See how it's negative market delta, negative market delta. See red, red, and positive 410. Now anything over 200, I'd, I'd say not to look at the numbers too much, but anything over 200 on crude is a very significant uh, imbalance, buy imbalance. Okay, so let's look at the cell. The cell's at 10 o'clock, pretty much 10 o'clock, 06. So we look at the cell. Where was it? 9.45, 10, right there, okay. This one? Negative market delta. So what you do is you'll match them up. You see how the positive and negative market delta work? You see how green? See the slash? Slash means there's a buy and sell and balance. The best thing to do is just look, see if it's negative or positive market delta. See how it's negative right there? So that would be a transition for you. That's a transition short, right? And this is a transition long. You see the big difference, Al? See it close green? After the arrow fires, that's a long, and it closed red for a short when the arrow fires, that's a short. Your stop loss then now will be two ticks above the swing high. So all these trades right here, when the arrow fires, your stop loss is two ticks below that swing low. Your stop loss is two ticks below that swing low. Your stop loss is two ticks below that swing low. Your stop loss is two ticks above this swing high. Two ticks above this swing high. 
two ticks above this swing high. See how that works? That's how you do your stop losses. Okay. Yeah, we always want to use market delta for confirmation. Okay. Market delta for confirmation for our entries.